Hey, sports fans, welcome to the Skylander Sports Scene. This is John Kuntz broadcasting from Sussex County Community College right here on 97.5 WRSK, your cruising oldie station. Today I have two guests. I have Luke Lowry, who is an assistant baseball coach at Sussex County Community College, and Eric Checker, who is also an assistant coach in our soccer program, and he'll be working with our goalkeepers. Both of these young men have been former players uh, for us at Sussex County Community College, and I'm glad to have them here today. So welcome to the show, fellas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good to be here. Okay, so let's start here, guys. Um, I guess I guess we'll start with Luke since it's baseball season is right around the corner here. We're getting the team ready and, and prepared. But let's tell the audience a little bit about your background. Um, I know that you played here and you, you've done some things after Sussex, but tell us a little bit about your background here at Sussex County Community College and what your experience was like. Thank you. Um, yeah, I played here in 13 and 14, I believe. And then um, I transferred to four-year Bloomfield College in uh, Newark, New Jersey. Um, yeah, I had a great time here w with um, Coach Rahm. Uh, he taught me a lot over the years and definitely made me a better person and a, uh, a better baseball player, which got me to that four-year school in uh, Newark. It was a D2. Um, yeah, he taught me a lot, and then I'm bringing it to these guys here, and we have a good uh, squad this year. So what was what was it really like? Uh, playing? What were some highlights or lowlights when you were here at, at Sussex County Community College, and what what exactly did you learn? You know, as a, as a baseball player and and a student uh, here at the college. Well, um, after high school, I went to a, a four year school right away because I just wanted to get out of the house and be out on my own, but that definitely was not the right move. Uh, I realized that after a year and a half, I didn't even play baseball right out of high school. I played football, and then okay. I played um, summer ball, and then Rom saw me, and he wanted me to come here, and that's what I did, and it was the best decision I ever made. And that's kind of the mantra of, of, the, of this particular two-year two college, you know, start here, go anywhere, yeah. and it is a great opportunity for for kids coming out of high school, sometimes they don't they don't want to go to the, the two year college, but from a, a tuition standpoint, it's it's affordable. I think from an athletic standpoint, and you may agree with me on this, uh, a lot of uh, the student athletes get an opportunity right out of the gate to contribute. That the you know if they have some ability, they're not going to end up sitting on the bench, not playing, or not even making uh, making the team. Would that be an, an accurate statement as to what you saw in the past? Yeah, that's pretty much correct it's just that um since it's only so uh, freshmen and sophomores you're not competing against juniors and seniors if you go to a four-year right off the bat right out of high school you're going to be competing against sophomores juniors and seniors guys that have been there for three years the coach knows how they play but when you come to a juco you're competing with other freshmen and sophomores so you pretty much have a chance to win a spot right off the bat yeah, they're kind of everybody's like in the same particular boat. Not a, not a lot of guys with you know three years experience or yep. whatever. You know, a lot of first time players because there is a lot of turnover from one year to the next. So it gives those uh, those players coming right out of high school a great opportunity to play. Yep. All right, Eric. Let's let's go to you. Same same particular question. You played for us uh, uh, for us here at Sussex as a goalkeeper, um, and then you went on from here. Tell us a little bit about your experience at Sussex when you were playing and playing under coach Frank Vernacchio, what that was like and, and as a student here at the college. Yeah, I, uh, I came in, I graduated high school in 2015 and I committed to Frank uh, in June and they didn't have a goalkeeper so I was the only one. Um, and I came in, wasn't really too sure what to expect and I moved into the international uh, with all the international boys and over in their house and I really grew a bond with those guys. like nobody I've ever met before like we were all such a tight group and then that grew in the season we didn't have too many people we had like 13 14 guys um, so we didn't have too many subs but we really knew how to play for each other we had a bond that was unlike anything else and it really showed throughout the season um, a little rough uh, my low my low point there I definitely dislocated my shoulder and that was that was a real rough one that. right before uh, playoffs started. So we uh, 
lost in a penalty shootout in the uh, GSAC finals. And that was tough to Who watch was the from the sidelines. That took your place that day. Zach Novak, yeah, our left Zach. back. He he uh or no, our right back. He came in and he's played football before. So right. he had the hands to do it and he came up with some clutch saves. It was it was a really incredible thing to to watch there. Yeah, I remember that. I was at yeah. that game, you know, and I felt so yeah. bad for him. And I know because he Cause felt he, really yeah. bad. You know, having to replace you as the mm-hmm. goalkeeper. You've been there all season long, biggest game of the year going for the championship and uh, I mean he did it he did a great job in in goal oh yeah he definitely so, did so what about after Sussex what what happened then after Sussex I uh I went down to Rowan University uh when I started uh we were 17th in the nation um took me a couple weeks to get acclimated uh it was a very rigorous preseason down there um the coaches are incredible that's that's the main reason why I was so happy with the experience um I love playing and everything but there's nothing like uh coach baker and his philosophy and the way that he talked about the game and he was this the connection between him and frank um well they they basically did the same thing they're trying to develop you as people not athletes as much like yeah that's that's part of it but um they really want to develop you as a person that translates into the real world and i had such a great time down there it was me and three other keepers and um we were all really good friends and it was incredible because I would have to play every day against the number one team and uh, the number one offense in the country so getting all that workout that's uh that's pretty good for me as well and it was a tough ending to the season but after a couple couple weeks I was able to uh, hop in I was a starting goalie there and uh, it was a really great experience yeah so uh, Eric what what's the most important thing that you learned during during your time at Sussex uh, you know being a student here being a student athlete playing under head coach Frank Bernacchio in the soccer program what what's the most important thing in your mind that you learned honestly just taking responsibility and owning everything around you like it's it's not a it's not a game the real world it's the, the soccer seasons here being a student here uh, moving out of my house and living with the guys um, it just taught me how to grow up. That was that was pretty much the main thing that I've done over the last couple of years. Uh, my personality has really changed. Uh, the way that I look at life and talk to people, it was it was a really great experience these past three years. Yeah, that's a good thing. You know, taking responsibility, I know, is something that Coach Vernacchio, you know, stresses in everything that you do, whether it's on the field or in the classroom or in life in general. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, so, Luke, I want to ask you the same question. Uh, during your time here, wh- what would you say is the most important thing that, that you learned? Um, definitely coming back here after being at my four year, I was not ready to go away to school yet, I would say. And schoolwork was too much. And then coming back here, I found that the teachers, or the professors, helped you out a lot more here than they did at my four year school. And when I went back to a four year after graduating Sussex, it was just a lot easier. School came a lot easier and that just made me a better person, I would say. Yeah, I think the, I think what I've seen over the years and I've been here for a lot of years, but uh, as far as the faculty are concerned and the staff of this particular community college from top to bottom, you know, from, from the president that we have now, Dr. John Conley, to everybody who's involved with the college, no matter what their job is, wants to see students succeed and will do what they can to help them, you know, whether it's, you know, extra uh, help in the classroom or from the financial aid office or from the ladies in the registrar's office or from security personnel. Whoever is here at the college, you know, does a really good job in trying to trying to help, uh, help our students. Um, all right, so let me ask this question, Luke. So now the shoe's on the other foot. You were the athlete. You were the student athlete for a number of years throughout your life growing up. Um, and now you're an assistant coach in the Skylander baseball program. What's your approach? What do you see? What, what's different for you now? How do you respond to the players? Because both of you are relatively close age to them. Um, what's that experience like? 
Well, I feel like it's definitely easier for me sometimes to get across to the players rather than Coach Rom or uh, Coach Ryan just because I was just there. I was just in their shoes. I was still playing, um, so I know what frustrates them, but now I can see what frustrates Rom, Coach Rom, and uh, Coach Ryan, Coach Kyle. It's just, it's a lot different. Um, there's some things as a coach that gets under your skin. Now I can see that, why they get mad. And it definitely aggravates me sometimes. But I try to um, I try to see it from the point of view as the player still, too, just because it I was just there, and I understand it. Yeah. I think as a coach, you know, you – you definitely got to get the big picture. You got to see the whole thing, you know. And and in baseball, there's, you know, so many uh, position players and pitchers and catchers and uh, so many aspects of the game, you know, hitting and and fielding and base running and defensive schemes and all those kinds of things. So as a coach, you have to see all those. Sometimes as a player, you kind of get locked into your your performance, mm -hmm. you know, and what you need to do to uh, to succeed. So uh, Eric, uh, same question. Um, Drew's on the other foot now. What are your expectations? What are you seeing? You guys are kind of – you're in your off season, but there's still preparation going on. There, there's, there's meetings with the players, with the coaching staff. Um, you know, workouts will begin in the summer. Before you know it, that will be here. Um, so what has the, the, the early part of your, your coaching career been like? Well, I even, I even started coaching um, – Younger kids, of course, uh, maybe like eight to fourteen year olds. Um, so I have a different presence, and I kind of have an idea of how coaching is going to go. But just like Luke said, we were just here uh, two years ago, or a couple years ago, and um, I just hope the kids understand that that it's not like we're we're so far out. Like we understand how it is, we understand what it takes to get to a certain level. Like we know how how it goes. So. Um, I just hope that they can respect that we're ki we're kids compared to some coaches, right. but we we know what we're talking about, right. and we have an idea of how how to get to the next level. Yeah, and you earn their respect, mm -hmm. you know, from your knowledge and the experience. Yeah. Even though you you've just had their experience, like you said, that can be an advantage. You were just in their mm -hmm. shoes, you know, a couple of years ago, or or, or even uh, less than that. Um, so that 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 certainly could uh, help you out. Um, you're listening to 97.5 WRSK, your cruising oldie station in the Skylander sports scene. My guests today are assistant baseball coach Luke Lowry and assistant soccer coach Eric Checker, who will be working with our goalkeepers on the upcoming season. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, Luke, since we're close to the baseball season getting started, and you guys have been practicing now for a number of week, weeks, mostly inside because of the weather, uh, what's the expectation like for the baseball uh, program this season? What what are some of the goals? What are the kid? What are the players talking about? What is, is Coach Ramadan Mamidi talking about? Well, obviously the main goal is to make playoffs, and that's something that we haven't been able to do these last couple of years. And well, one saying that I like is "play for the pile," and that's just you play so you can all just pile on guys at the end of a game or at the end of a playoff game. It's just uh, that's something to look forward to for guys. That's just an exciting moment. And we got a lot. We got a um, good group of guys. We got a diverse group, too. And that's something that um, I've been playing around since I was here when I went to Bloomfield. And it's just uh, it just keeps growing. And I like that just because it's a different atmosphere every time we go to practice and uh it's just a lot of fun these guys are having a lot of fun coaches are having a lot of fun and um it's going to be a good season yeah i, I like that saying uh, play for the pile you know it makes you think you a team that wins the world series or the championship everybody's out on the field you know jumping on everybody at at, uh, at the pitcher's mound mm -hmm. um talk a little bit about um the game schedule now you guys have got some trips coming up you You'll be going to Maryland. You're going to Florida. You got an eight or ten game swing in Florida during our, our spring break, you know. And then you'll be coming home. And you got some tough competition in the league. 
you know, some of those teams you face. Talk about the, some of those teams that, you, that you're going to be facing uh, during the course of the baseball season. Yeah, we um, play a couple tough teams, like Mercer County is always yeah. tough. Yeah. Um, CCM is always tough. And they've been tough when I was here, and I just know it's going to be a battle when we come – come game time against them in the mm -hmm. future. Oh, yeah. And it's just we got to play smart baseball against them. Um, pitchers need to come. They need to go up there and just throw their hearts out. And um, hitters will do their job. We just got to play smart baseball. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this, this particular region that we're in, in the National Junior College Athletic Association, Region 19, which encompasses New Jersey, Eastern Pennsylvania, and Delaware, has some pretty good, strong uh, baseball. Um, we play at the Division II level, so we do offer some scholarship money to our baseball players. As you mentioned, Mercer has been a perennial power over the last few years, has gotten to the College World Series, I think a, a year or so ago, got to the, the championship round, championship game even. Um, County College of Morris has improved their program. Uh, Lackawanna College up in Scranton is, is a solid program now. They're getting back on track. So you got to be ready to go every day. Um, are we going to have enough pitching, you know, to, to handle all that? Do we got the arms in in the stable this season? Yeah, we have um, we have about six or seven just pitchers only POs, and then we got about five dual guys. So yeah. we're going to have enough pitchers to go the season as long as everyone stays healthy. Right. Um, but we got um, we got Trevor Risden. Who's a returning mm -hmm. player, and he's point, yeah. yep, he's a strong guy, and we got Sean Kellerman too. Okay. He's also going to be one of our top guys, and we just got a whole bunch of other pen guys to come mm -hmm. out and help the starters out, and they're going to have a really good year. Yeah, you can never have enough pitching, that's for sure. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen during the course of the season, with injuries and and things of that nature. So Eric, let's talk a little bit. Even though it's it's early, I know there's still things that are being discussed and there's there's preparation going on as to well uh, what will occur for the for the soccer season um tell us a little bit about uh, what is being talked about uh for the for the upcoming 2018 skylander soccer programs well uh the main thing that frank has tried to put in place uh this off season um it's been like a leadership training um basically he felt that and i i could definitely see it myself um, when I was here, we didn't have the most talented players, but we had a lot of heart. And as we get more talented players in, uh, we kind of fall short every single year of uh, winning the region. And Frank was trying to pinpoint what it is, and he finally got it down that it's these meetings that we're having where we get the whole team together and we just try to you know, expand on the leadership qualities that everyone should be having and just trying to teach you to be a better person because the better life you live off the field, then it translates onto the soccer field. You're not just going to uh, do whatever you want off the field and not be disciplined and then show up on the soccer field and all of a sudden, you know, it's disciplines right there. So it's something, it's just a way of life that he's trying to teach here. So we do that once a week with, uh, with both teams, the men's and the women's. And it's been real good. So you start trying to create this uh, the culture Mm -hmm. so to speak of of the program and get get the players prepared from a you know a mental standpoint so you're working a lot now uh not only on their uh their physical skills off season and conditioning and things of that but but also from the mental aspect right. correct yeah 90 yeah. percent of this game is is mental you can definitely see it in all these games you either psych yourself out and you fall short or uh all these games where you should pro probably you know crush the other team and then all of a sudden 80th minute, it's 0-0 zero, zero, where they're beating you one nothing, and you're panicking. So it's it's all mental. Like, yeah, the, the athletic bit and the training and the futsal that we play and everything, uh, footwork, all that. It's it helps, but that that mental side is really really what we need. Yeah, that that mental aspect is is extremely important as well as starting to build some of the uh, camaraderie, you know, of the players and the togetherness. Yeah. is the another intangible to making a you know a, a a solid team during the course of the season would you agree with that oh yeah definitely like 
uh, you can learn how to how to play with somebody, and you kind of get the fluent uh, the fluency there. But there's nothing like uh, you know playing with somebody who's almost your best friend. Like you get to know them, and you really get that deep connection, and you understand where they're coming from, and if they've had struggles in their past, different things. It makes you play that much harder for them, and it really makes a solid season, a solid team. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Eric. You're listening to 97.5 in the Skylander Sports Scene, broadcasting from Sussex County Community College. Uh, my guests today are Luke Lowry from our, our baseball program, assistant coach, and Eric Checker, assistant coach with our soccer program. My name's John Kuntz, the athletic director here. My next question, and I'll keep Eric on the mic here, let's talk a little bit about recruitment now because uh, recruitment is – 365 days a year now. You got to go after players, whether you're in season, out of season. Uh, the soccer program has tapped into the international market as well as the baseball program. I have some international players. Um, you guys are recent history of being recruited to come to a, a particular college here at Sussex and, and where you went after Sussex. What do you remember about that process? What sold you to come here was it just a need or was just everything fit properly um and what do you tell somebody who's thinking about coming here yeah uh, when i was coming when i was in my high school season uh coach augie actually came up to me he was the assistant coach here um yeah, augie, augie Cassis, yeah, yeah he came up to me and started talking a little bit and i was i was a little you know i wasn't really into it uh community college it has that stigma um and I actually quit after my uh, my high school season. Like, I didn't plan on playing anymore. Mm. And then my spring season, I played one more game, and I had so much fun, I knew I wasn't done. So I talked to uh, talked to Augie, came in, met Frank, uh, loved it. And just like I said, I didn't, I didn't really know what to expect as community college, but I've heard that from a lot of the people that I've played with. Um, they don't expect too much. Like, they're kind of almost – bummed if they can't make it at a four-year level to come here but everyone leaves and it's such a tight family and it's like no team that I've ever been a part of um you hear about all these four-year teams they all have these egos and everything but everybody here is so close mm -hmm. it's such a different program and uh, the recruiting around the world that's pretty cool when you get to meet everybody from South America and Australia and Europe I uh, get a lot of those English kids um it's a pretty cool experience. Like I even just got back from Australia. I went with my best friend, uh, my left back over the last uh, my oh, two nice. years at Sussex. Okay. Yeah, so uh, yeah. that's fun. Yeah, yeah, you create those bonds. You yeah. know, it's kind of interesting when um, you have the international students uh, come to the program and and what they bring to the program. Mm -hmm. You know, a different look, a different feel, a different culture, obviously. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and it makes it it makes it fun. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So Luke, let's. Uh, I know baseball, you guys are kind of focused on getting the team prepared, you know, for the coming season. But obviously, you know, recruitment is always on the, on the, the minds of the coaches. What um, do you guys look for, you know, when you're going to be recruiting uh, this particular high school baseball season? Yeah, since it is such a fast turnover of guys, since there's only two years here, um, Rom's always looking um, online. We're always talking about guys coming in for next year. And we really just looking for guys that'll make the program better, guy, and for guys that we're losing this year that can be, we're looking for guys that can replace them. Right. So we're really just, um, we're looking around here too for guys. We work with um, some Newton guys. Mm -hmm. And I work with Josh Navisky, so I'm always keeping my eye out for right. talent that's yeah. local. Yeah. And Rom's keeping an eye out for um, international guys. Mm -hmm. And we're really just, we'll, we're still focusing on this season right now because it's coming up. But we're uh, also focusing on the future. Yeah, so. yeah. It never stops. I mean, no. and you always got to stay alert and uh, network with a lot of people, like you mentioned, to see, you know, what else is out there. Um, are you working with a particular group of uh, position players? Yes, I work with the catchers, and I do hitting with Coach Kyle. 
It's okay. Kyle Spence. And and uh, what have you been working on with our with our catching group? Um, well, they, we've just been doing uh, pretty much just just uh, normal catcher drills like blocking, framing, blocking blocking, 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 yeah. yeah, framing, blocking. We've been talking about pitch calling. Um, it's just all the stuff that catchers need to know. Mm -hmm. I mean, the most important thing is catching the ball. So right. framing is the most important thing, and then blocking is second. Yeah. Are all the pitchers, uh, pitches called from the bench? Or does, does the catcher have an option sometime to, to, to make a call as to what, what should be thrown? In the past, we've – well, in the past when I was here, mm -hmm. and I'm sure even last year – uh, Rom used to call pitches, right? But we are this year since we have experienced catchers and they just know the game really well. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have them call games this year. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah, that'll be a great experience and get them the opportunity to learn how to call the game, yeah. you know, and how to set up batters and and things of that nature. So let me bring uh, Eric back in real quick. Um, you're gonna be working with the goalies, so. When you go, go out and start looking at the recruits and potential players to come here or look at video, what what do you look for in a, a goalkeeper? Anything that – I mean, I really try to find passion almost because that's what you need. Like you can't be half-hearted uh, coming into anything. So mm -hmm. even if you may not be the technically uh, – they may not be the most technically sound uh, keepers or they have things to work on, um, I've seen some real uh, real change over a single month of working with somebody. So anybody who is at least, you know, devoted to the sport, yeah. um, that's, a, that's a real key right yeah. there. Yeah, they really have to have uh, commitment and, yeah. and dedication to want to be there and, and work hard at it and, b and be committed to the program. Well, you guys, we, we've come to the end of our time here. That went really quick today. I want to appreciate uh, you guys being with me today. Luke Lowry, our assistant baseball coach here at the college, and Eric Checker, our assistant uh, soccer coach, working with our goalkeeper. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. You've been listening to 97.5 Cruising Oldies in the Skylander sports scene. This is John Kuhn signing off. We'll catch you next time.